uh, well I thought you had to say go to Parkgate Street, uh, Parkgate Hall and obviously present yourself homeless uh, and then they tell you I have to bring the free phone every night to see if there's a bed available. Um, I rang the free phone for about a month straight and there was <clears throat> nothing available for me for the whole month. Then I had to get um, a letter to prove that I was actually homeless, that I was um, that my lease was up in the place I was renting. And once I gave them the letter, that's when I was booked into Mount Joy Street. My process was I went to Wood Key because I hadn't got a clue. Um, Wood Key, the social worker in Wood Key then referred me up to Park Aid Street. And I was given, when I went in um, and I declared myself as homeless, I was asked questions like, could I not go back to my ex? who I hadn't been with for a long time. I was asked, could I not go back to family? And I told him it was due to personal reasons. I was also threatened with social services, told that my child could be taken off me if I'm homeless. And I went back to Woodkey because I was in a state. I was given a mobile number with a digit missing and told to self-accommodate. I didn't know what self-accommodate meant. So I went back to Woodkey, the social worker in Woodkey, fair play to her, she, she kind of found out what self-accommodation meant and helped me look for a hotel so that was kind of my experience and then I was in a hotel then for two weeks I was taken into hospital then for a week and a half and then I was given Mount Joy Street where we were told we were there till we were housed and that was it. Um, do you feel that DCC Dumpsey Council did a good job in trying to help you? Um, after I was ho after ho my hus after being in hospital, yeah, they definitely did. Like, they got me into a place that was suitable and safe, and it was like a little home from home, like with Mount Joy Street. So it was. I felt then they did, but I had no contact. Like, I wasn't told where I was on the list or anything, or who to contact, or I was just told to basically wait there till I was housed. Well, for me, um, it's completely different. They told me that I wasn't on um, homeless priority. That I was just on the normal housing list and that it would take me up to eight years to be housed to go back out and look to rent again so um yeah they told me to just keep going and look for houses to be renting and uh, I fought for priority I went to TDs I went to key workers uh, I literally took for this eviction for me to be awarded my whole year's priority We call ourselves the Cinderella girl, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We're the Cinderella family. The rules was too, too much to live by. Like, even prisoners don't even have to live by that many rules. Uh, basically, you weren't allowed to talk to no neighbours. You couldn't knock into a neighbour. When passing by, you wasn't even allowed to say hello. Uh, the kids wasn't even allowed to say hello. So, basically, DCC and the landlord was making us ignorant people in my eyes. For me to walk by somebody without saying hello or even smiling at them, I think that's very ignorant. So yeah, that, that was a hard wheel to live by. You weren't allowed into each other's rooms, like yeah. you weren't allowed that the kids play. That was really tough. For me, I often had asthma attacks and Molly wasn't allowed to knock, knock into a neighbour for help because it was one of the rules. You had to be in by 12 o'clock, like, which is fine because ha we have kids, we were in by 12, but you weren't allowed to have a night out. Like if you wanted to have a night out, you had to go to... You had to basically ring Park Aid Street and tell them you got asked permission. Can you have a night out? Uh, another rule as well was the room checks that they come and inspect your room twice a day, every day, so Monday to Sunday, uh, twice a day. They check literally for everything. From so from to skating, yeah, from skating yeah, <laughs> ceilings to walls to skirt walls to underneath your bed, in your fridge, in your cupboards. Literally, you have no privacy in your own home because they've been rooting through your like, wardrobes, everything, drawers, you name it. They checked everything and they would tick on a list what you had to clean and then they check in the afternoon to see if you cleaned that and then the next day, so on and so on. I was renting and stuff and then I lost my place and then I got put into Mount Joy. So Mount Joy Street compared to a B&B &B was completely different. Like the layout, it was like your own little home. So yeah, it was very tough, very tough. I think it's very tough to go to go through, yeah. I went to bring the child to school, and then that was obviously Thursday morning, wasn't it? Um, I came back about half nine. Uh, the landlord himself and a staff member was on. They didn't mention one thing to me. They just went on like it was a normal day. So I went about my business, did what I had to do, and then only for that night, a girl who lived in the next building. 
she texted me on Facebook and told me that we was getting evicted. And then 8 o'clock Friday morning, I get a knock on the door from staff saying that literally we we're getting evicted and that DCC would be in contact with us. Here's a number you had to ring. So I rang that number, that was DCC. And then that's when they just told me that I was already booked into the Regency Hotel that they booked me in that night. So I literally had no time or space or anything to get my head together around like what was actually happening and then having to get all my stuff together within a few hours like not even a night or a day or a week they literally was like right mate you're booked into the regency well they they knew i was going to work at uh i'd be leaving about quarter to eight so they said could i hang on for about half eight i said yep no bother i'm in work at nine so i'd be able to run and get the bus so a quarter to nine came and i still had no knock the two dcc workers were outside but i didn't know it was anything to do with dcc so i got a text message from one of the networks that i'm involved in with and they said the eviction news are being put out i hadn't got a clue i ran into a local td he got onto onto dcc and they couldn't understand how he already knew when they weren't even informed of what had happened like DCC themselves were like, well, we're not even fully sure of what's happened. So I got a phone call that night on a private number saying, I'm going to a lovely B&B in the or called the RNG yeah. on the Swords Road. And um, I explained my situation about what happened to me in the, ho- what happened in the hotel before. And I was told if I had any problems to ring back on the number, but it was a private number. So, and that was it. A lot of us stood stayed, as you know, and a lot of people, but kind of forced out. So when we seen the way the Dublin Corporation tried to force people out of the buildings, that's when we kind of was like, "Why? Well, okay, this way, this treatment is not necessary. This treatment is actually wrong. So if we come together and stand together and fight together, that they'll have to listen to us. But like the way they did just come in and try to shift people off, that, that was just to- that, that was a disgrace and they should be ashamed of themselves. They really should. It was amazing, the support. Yeah. Um, just amazing. Like, when I did the speech at the Water March, I got a lot of backlash from a few people. And just the support that these people that didn't know us, didn't owe us anything, they just came up and they dedicated their time to sit there and fight for rights for our kids. And they weren't going to get anything out of it. Like, they weren't going to be rewarded or anything. They just stood by us and... I'd never be able to thank the people. Like... Even now, I'm just getting a bit choked up. Sorry, like, yeah. even the neighbours up on Mount Joy Street, they were just, they made us feel like we belonged there, didn't they, yeah. on the street? And yeah. they got behind us. And then going to DCC, having the support over there, really does prove power, in, yeah. like, in numbers. Like, you know, that way, like, the amount of people that you had there, you were able to... Yeah, stand up for yourselves. Well, they were able to help us and guide us into, like, uh, the process, obviously, on... What was happening to us, they guided us in the right path and showed us to actually stand up for ourselves and to fight, which is a good thing as well, that we'll be able to to help other people now in our situation. No options, there's one option. That's the only option they're putting out there, and that's the HAP scheme. That's so what's called social housing. Uh, yeah, housing assistance payment. So basically, they're trying to push half onto people because they're giving you no other option. So it's, you either take half or you're in your B&B. That's the way they're putting it to you. But it's kind of forced on you where you're, they're intimidating you into going to these, these viewings and into back into private renting. And they're not giving us any other conclusion but half. That's all they're saying, and that's with everybody that I know, and like that's in a marriage conversation, not just us in Mountjoy, but they're just pushing half onto people. Mm-hmm. Oh, the way they behaved, uh, now it's a bit, it depends. Like with some people, they're just we talk tomorrow, yeah, we have a lovely B&B, we have a lovely room for you, and then people are getting up and they're like, yeah, okay, they're taking it. Where in my case, I got treated terrible by DCC, like I got thrown from pillow to post, I got. Yeah, I put in two complaints because the way they treated me wasn't nice. So I think they treated uh, like everybody different group, and because we stood together and came as a group, they didn't like that one bit, and they did try to split us up. Yeah, because they knew like if if we all stood together, that there was going to become a big problem, and it was a big problem that did a cure when we did come stick stand together. So like I think there there is this thing where DCC say, "Oh, meet us halfway," but it's never meet us halfway. It's 
meters where we tell you to meet us. Yeah. Like, there are schemes out there, there are payments out there that can help and will suit people and suit ourselves. But it's oh, still no. not, it's not the, it's not the answer though, at the end of the day. Like, you walk around Dublin and you see places boarded up and then you turn the corner and you see somebody sleeping rough on, sleeping rough on the street. It's like, it's just, it just makes no sense. For the government to get their money out and stop the, all them empty houses and empty flats and everything and the buildings to build houses for people, not to go off and pay landlords to rent, the amount of money they're actually wasting and then to actually buy houses off landlords just so they can rent them, that's, yeah, they should put all that money into social housing, for affordable housing so that we can all have a proper home that we're entitled to. It is a continental right to have a safe and secure home. So yeah, the Dublin Corporation shouldn't do their job that they said they were going to do. Like I think it's quite unfair, like as I as we always say, there's always a different story behind every case. But like there's people that have come up towards me and have said like I I went for a mortgage but I can't get a mortgage because I was in a relationship and I had one or two kids. I'm being refused a mortgage because my kids are being classed as a bill. Like how are they expecting people to buy houses? I just... I personally blame the government, myself. I don't blame... I think DCC have a job to do. I think it's the government that have put DCC in this situation where... Look... You're going to have to just tell X, Y and Z they're going to emergency accommodation and that's it. Because we're not going to give fund the money for the houses. Or... They're just not putting any options out there. Stand together. Yeah, so stand get together. everybody that you can. Everybody I think that's in homeless accommodation should stick, come together, protest, do petitions, whatever it takes, and just, yeah, just Not get just even homeless, like people that just want housing, want to be able to afford decent rents yeah. or decent mortgages. Like, not, I don't know, decent's not the right word, but affordable. Like, how they expect, like, I was asked, like, why my ex can't pay for rent for me and my daughter, and I was like, well, if he's paying rent for himself, how's he going to pay rent for himself and then for me? And his daughter, and what, he doesn't owe me anything. Yeah, he's for his child, yeah, but not me. Like, I did, I, I, sorry, I'm just getting a bit emotional, yeah. <laughs> a bit angry. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't think it should be just all homeless. It should be every man, woman and child standing together. Yeah. True. Yeah. Like a lot of people will judge it. Oh yeah, you're home. You just want this. You want that. That's not the case. I've met people in their situation. They've lost their mortgage. They've come from the domestic violence. People just don't give up their homes like that for yeah, no that's reason. That's why people just think that you just become homeless and that you're yeah, entitled to queue. all this yeah things and, and that you're going to true. get your house, which is not true at all. You don't like, skip the queue. Should, they're, they're, there's a friend I know that. She lives, she's living in our nanny's house that our nanny passed away last year and now she's facing homelessness all because of the house and the nanny has passed. So like that, it, there is a lot of people that is facing homelessness and a lot of people would judge, but until they're in this situation, they wouldn't be judging if they were in this situation because mm -hmm. it is actually a hard thing to go through.